action. We need more men talking and less women talking. Tell me more. Tell me more. It's a teacher-pupil relationship. Okay. I'm here to guide you, lead you. A lot of these podcasts have situations where we're allowing women to share a stage with us as our equals. A woman is not my equal. She can't be. She wasn't designed to be. She's my complimentary piece. These dudes are using females as clout. Like, they want to show, like, hey, look, I can pull women. Hey, being a man, look, right now, right now, women are optional. If you're still building your platform, if you're still trying to uh, upgrade in your career, if you're still trying to go get the dollar, women are optional, okay? You got to go get it because once you go get it, when it comes to the coochie, brother, you got it. I promise. You're going to get it every time. You have to build a space. I, I've, I said this uh, last week on my show. I said that the value that a man truly brings is the stability he brings to a woman's life. We often think that is money. That's a part of it. But even if it's her money, your management to her money, how she spends it, how you guys spend it as a household, that's what matters. It's bringing the stability to her life. How do you articulate that to a woman? How do you get a woman to understand, hey, I know you make $70,000 a year. I get it. But you still ain't got no direction on how you want to build a very specific thing. How do you articulate that to her? A lot of times, let's let's talk real. What's been the results of how you've been living before I showed up? Ooh, okay, okay, okay. If you was if 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 everything that you had is um uh, being repoed, um, <laughs> you barely keeping up with your bills, it's not work. You don't have stability. I'm gonna come in and say, hey, look, this is what we are gonna do. We let's say we're making about eight nine thousand dollars a month. God, damn, together that's a, money. that's a lot of money you was previously i'm gonna show you because a lot of banks now they'll show you what you're spending your money on well damn baby you were spending twelve hundred dollars a month out to eat we're not gonna do that we're gonna you, start grocery when shopping. you say that number eight or nine thousand dollars a month mm -hmm. you're speaking to a select few individuals like who are really enjoying a nice life that's a pretty decent life in america to make nine thousand dollars a month you extrapolate that over 12 months i mean you, that's a decent living. correction I, I need to make a correction. I'm What's not up? talking about a single person. I'm talking people. about when two people come together. And, and it probably is, but these that's are two people. That's still a nice life. That's true. <laughs> that's, that's okay. still a nice Let's life. Let's say you're making $4,000 a month. Okay. Because you have to get into a place to where you can get into that, I like to call it like the gap. All right. Where you're not spending bills. So you may have to cut back. You may have to change your lifestyle and it's not something. Because women, I've said this before, especially black women, they create this consumerism in the household to where you have to be spending. You got to pay bills. Um, not only are you paying bills, buying food, we got to go on trips. We got to have leisure. I think women right now at this moment in time, I think they're like 70% of the buying power in America. And so mm -hmm. all the media is directly pertaining to them because they spend the money. Even if they're spending your money, they're still spending the money. And so they advertise towards them. And so since all this advertising is one of the most powerful things in the history of human existence, you're bombarded with all these products. You are. And that's the it, that's the dilemma for a man is to come in and shift that psychology from that. He's got to take that mind that you've got to change up that whole frame. OK, this is what we're going to do in preparation for the future. Yes, if you yes, bring yes. that to her and set that exam and she sees it because, hey, you are the miracle worker in your house. As a man, you are the miracle worker. You're the closest thing to God she going to ever see. Because you perform miracles for her. Look at the, like as Kevin Samuel said, look at the buildings we create. Look at the, we build the world. And they see us do it. Hey, your name, the farm God, is so amazing to me. <laughs> just, just because, like, you have to pacify these women with words. Like, mm -hmm. you have to soothe their soul with vision and intention. And while simultaneously you have to stroke their ego because women have some of the biggest egos on the planet. You'll say you don't. Your ego is almost as big as my ego. You want to feel like you're the most baddest woman in the whole entire world. And it's my job to bring that out of you. What do you have to do with your children? Wow. Look, I don't want to like, because right now I know women want to feel important, but women treat children as a luxury that they cannot afford. They will pawn their children off on any person who's willing to watch their children, whether it's a, a reasonable person, an unreasonable person. I know you, you get upset, but like women think they have to have a life too. And their children are intruding on their lives. Well, I ask that question because women are much like children. Your child has this almost um, sometimes I feel like this superimposed ego, <clears throat> especially when they start to get teenagers, when they start to get into the know of the world. And you're yes. you're footing the bill for everything. I have a 17 year old daughter who feels like she's figured out the entire world and is paying for nothing. <laughs> and that's you and, and not understanding that the, that the world was created and built for her. 
And that's what happens with women. Because when you give that to someone, <laughs> they don't understand. They don't understand the true sacrifice in it. They think that it's a given that they should have it. Women don't have anything without the permission of men who have the power to defend it. You said this before. We have the power to defend our ideas. A woman, look, when a woman walks into a building, when I'm with my woman, as soon as she gets belligerent with any person, I got to fight this man. Instantaneously, it's go mode just to defend your honor. I think that I'm a real feminist. I'm a for real feminist. I think most women, y'all pretend feminists. You only believe in equality of the sexes, equality of the genders when it benefits you. I believe in equality of the genders when it benefits everybody. You see, as soon as things get tough, a woman says, but I'm a woman and you're a man instantly. That's the instant okay. reaction. The thing is, they care about being able to utilize the privilege. They want to be able to utilize the privilege, privilege like, well, they think we have privilege, but we have responsibility. But they want to be able to utilize the privilege as they see men doing. That's when they talk about equality. Because, look, they talk about pay. We want to be paid the same. They want the same pay. A lot of what women are talking about is money, being able to access income to do what they like to do with it. Monetarily, women are, are, are superseding men exponentially right now that's true a woman's access to capital is greater than my access to capital whether you use the government whether you use other men whether you go get a job your access to capital is greater than my access to capital but my ability to defend that said capital is a whole different thing men think in a thrifty mindset because i know i have to fight for this money I have to I have to put my life on the line for this money. Baby, if you got a thousand dollar bag and you got on some some red bottoms, Louis Vuitton shoes or whatever it is you're wearing, I got to squabble with any person in the world who's trying to come and snatch that from you. All the time. What do you think the solution is to that? How, how do we will it change? I, look like in this in this world of, of hyper consumerism, I don't think that we can actually change that. But we can insert value into our woman's life. Right. Like I, t I could tell a woman, hey, look, this is what the goal is. This is what we're trying to obtain. Then all of a sudden, when she sees a valuable life, then all of a sudden those trinkets don't mean very much anymore. But that's the responsibility of a man. I think, look, man, we're, we're slacking on our job. Yeah. I, I don't have the ability to be financially uh, supportive to any person in the world. But the, the inherent value that I add, I'm like a dinosaur. I'm like the link between the last man and the modern man. I'm a real man. And I'm not trying to disparage any man in here who has a penis and two testicles. You are still a man. But in the colloquial sense, in the social sense, when I'm going to fight for and defend a woman's honor, when it comes to chivalry, I am a black knight in America, brother. We will have to shift the idea of how we see men in relationships because of what you just said. Women are in the workforce. They are. They are surpassing men uh, in it's, it's terms of income. Yes. But you still need him there for so many things that you can't provide, even when it comes uh, to rendering and raising children. So a man's value, I keep saying this, is not in his pockets. It's it is not. in his mind and his character. And that's what she's going to need when she fucks up, because she's going to do that quite a bit. How many women are hearing this conversation? Like when I talk to my ex-wife, when I talk to my current woman, and she's a these are phenomenal women, but there's so much negative media out here for putting ideas in their mind that like equality is actual equality, that you can actually do the things that I can't do. And you can't. The same way that I can't do the things that you can do. When I say that I'm a feminist, I believe that a woman has the ability to uh, not to do the same thing that I can do, but in a different way. I think the issue has become that we think that women are equal to us. And we, we keep talking about this, but we need to really state that fact. You and me are not the same. We're different. I don't like to talk about greater than, lesser than, but I'll even... I'll even say this. We're different. Men are replacing women <laughs> with men who want to be women. Bro. Only a man has the power to do that. My brother hit me up, right? And he told me that someone sent him a picture on uh, like Facebook or something like that. And he was like, man, this is a bad lady. And then all of a sudden he read the, the comments and it was a whole man. <laughs> <laughs> women aren't even understanding that, that what happens because men have a great perversion. Most men are very perverted. 
what happens when most, you have most people are very promoted. most people yes yes what yes. do you what happens when you have a man that wants to replace real women with men who are becoming women and don't have a need for women anymore can we put this in a historical context go ahead when we had uh, conquistadors come to america those ships were filled with dudes okay and so they went six or seven years without no contact with women but they had to get the thing done they went and cleared the frontier. They fought the wars. They fought the Native Americans. They killed these folks so they can make sure that it was habitable for women who wanted to be comfortable. But while they were living in discomfort, they was popping some booty. <laughs> Probably so. Most I'm, likely. I'm not promoting any type of homosexual ideology. What I'm right. saying is I don't even believe that homosexuality exists. I believe that human beings have to engage in sexual experiences, and we will with whomever is opportune. And so in this market right now where economically actual women, their value is this high, hey, the price of male booty is still like right here. And so I'm going to go get the booty that I can. This is a very interesting this is a very interesting conversation <laughs> because I was telling my wife, Trigger I warning. said, Oh, it's triggered. This, <laughs> we heavy in here. I said that the only true homosexuality that exists is with men and not women. And now you say it don't, don't exist at all. And you know what? I'm almost leaning towards that because we are in nature sexual beings. I, prime example. How many times have you seen a woman who is lesbian, who has claimed to be lesbian or have you know, I don't want to, I don't know if this is a, a politically incorrect term, stud or butch, and they get pregnant. I guarantee you, if you took the brat. one homosexual man <laughs> and one homosexual woman and left them on an island by themselves, they wouldn't be homosexual anymore. Because it doesn't really exist. Because it's our nature to have some sort of sexual contact. That's a term that human beings created because we want to categorize people. Mm -hmm. Every human person is looking for a sexual experience and whoever is going to give me that sexual experience and is compatible with who I am as a person, I'm going to enjoy that experience. Everybody's just trying to get a nut, but we're trying to get in a nut does not create your identity. Okay. Mm. The most prettiest women that I ever got nuts from, like they didn't define me that they didn't, they didn't make who I am as a person. It was just a wonderful experience with a really beautiful ass, dope ass woman. This is a very interesting conversation. I like that. And I think because we have categorized ourselves in these different places and put ourselves in these positions, that's why we have so much issue. And we've also taken that bedroom conversation and put it out publicly. And that's an issue. I said this. I don't even have to go to the Bible to say this or, or to prove this point. But I was just telling my wife this. This is why. Sex outside of marriage is perversion. This is why sex outside of marriage is defiled because it's so much undefined outside of it. When we get outside, see, a lot of times when we start talking like that, people start hearing what they can't do and what they can do because you're right. At its core, we want to get a nut off. Yes, but yes. everything must have order. Everything must have order. When you don't have order, look at our country now. It's so perverse that it's failing. I, I believe that perversion um, I think I said perversion and um, I forgot what, what else I said was going to be the downfall of the country. But perversion is one of those things because we don't have order. Listen, you don't think in China and in Russia that when those doors close, people aren't doing freaky deaky things. They're doing super freaky things. But it's the way they're conducting themselves in public. That's the difference. Listen, I believe that there are married couples that just, hey. We have, they want to do some swinger. They want to do some crazy wild things. And they go behind closed doors and do that. Everybody has some level of perversion. So let's suppose that I'm like, <clears throat> I have one of the most greatest sex drives in the history of the world, right? I want to have sex one hour a day, every single day for the rest of my life. There's 24 hours in a day. That's one 24th of my life. I'm a more, I'm more of an eater than I am a sexual person. Okay. But we want to put our identity in just in the sexual experience. We forget about all the other things. I'm talking to my partner more than I'm having sex with my partner. This is a very big thing. So for me to minimize myself to one twenty fourth of myself, man, that's really like I'm 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 devaluing myself. And not to have a conversation about to truly value my my humanity as a person, that's really hurting America. That's really hurting the world right now. This whole pride, man. I'm so glad that Pride Month is coming to an end. Because people are prideful about who they can sleep with. And that's crazy as hell because the majority of men do not have the capacity to sleep with anybody. <laughs> that is true, which is why I think that prostitution should be legal. I believe that it should be legal. Listen. OnlyFans is real. 
I, I, I said that access to, okay, in the relationship world, when we start talking about the relationship dynamic between men and, and women, one thing that we leave off the table, even with same sex relationships, is access to sex. Not everyone has the same access to sex. You were on the Dwight Diaz and how with me, yes? Yes. CVN 69. 69, the love boat. 69 on the 69. Bro, at, when the air wing is on the ship, there's probably like over 5,000 people. There, yeah. there might be 300, 400 women on that bad boy. Right. And so if you actually have access to some good old vagine, you're in a very select category. Yes. There was a girl, they called her Saturday Night Special because they, they went into her, her bunk and she had a whole uh, notebook of men that was, that was knocking her off. Oh, wow. When they put her, they had her on restriction, one female, they had like 32 men on restriction. You know, we be getting views on this show, so <laughs> she might see it. She might know who she is. Hey, Saturday Night Special, how you doing, baby? I, I, I'm, I, I don't, uh, I don't be snitching. I don't believe in snitching. So I'll just say this: these guys gonna know what I'm talking about. I used to see some cats walk down the EXO's P way to yeah. get to the females' birth, and we was out to see to get some cootie cat. But if they watch this, they gonna know exactly who they are, bro. Like, and so I'm one of those individuals. They got in trouble. Uh, I'm so thankful for the, the the fact that I had a. I had vagina on the boat. On, on the boat, it was wonderful, and you know, unfortunately, I was also married. So, like when I was in port, I had my wife, and when I was on the boat, I had my uh, my lady, and it was a very good experience. One time, we was on a, uh, I knocked her off on a bomb because you know I was in the weapons department, and so we had to go check magazines and magazines all up and down the boat. Well, I, I bust that booty on the bomb, boy. It's so funny too, because <laughs> my my wife, although we didn't know each other when she was in navy, she's she's she was a gunner's mate. She was on the West Coast. That's funny. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had keys to the whole entire ship. And so if yeah. you really wanted to go and get and get busy, you could. But I'm just saying that access to sexual experiences, it really defines our sexuality. And so when I'm talking to 40% of men right now who are not who are economically challenged, they're also sexually challenged because they can't afford to get no booty. And that's a whole problem. And I know that those individuals who are watching this right now, if you want to have access to women, you go with your partners and you build something. And as you build, I guarantee you, if you build it, she will come. She will come. I think that's where in the red pill world or the manosphere, <clears throat> when they talk about, and I should say we, because it's still a manly conversation. Yes. You're following your purpose. And building up things for yourself matters because, like you say, you women want to be comfortable. If you cannot create an environment where she's safe and comfortable, it's going to be hard for you to get some cookie. Because why? Innately, subconsciously, we are still animals. OK, we must protect ourselves. If she gets pregnant, how can you then take care of this baby? How can you take care of her and this child? This is why I said, uh, even in the Rational Mail by Rolo Tomasi, that. Women are really rational masquerading as romantics. Can we talk about Rolo Tomasi? Go ahead. Because him as an individual, his work is a great work. He referred it to me. I thumbed through it. I really did. Mm -hmm. Then I, when I watched him, <clears throat> he does not exude the characteristics that I would say that a masculine man would exude. He is a married man who is kind of like living a cuckold type life. And he's talking <laughs> to men about what they're supposed to do and how they're supposed to right. operate around other around women. And I'm like, yo, 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 you're kind of being disingenuous. I know from real life experience that women respond to us in a very positive way. Mm -hmm. And so since women respond to us in a positive way, with money or no money, I know how what female energy, feminine energy looks like. Well, remember, white men just aren't that cool overall. So they need that literature. Whereas black men, we've lived a different life with our women. We kind of have a natural cool and a different approach with how we approach the sexual dynamic. That's just being, I'm just being real. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's one. Two, that's hey, why hey, we're, go ahead. There, there's some black nerds, bro. It's some black, it, it, hey. some cool ass white even, niggas, bro. It, it's, some, it's some cool <laughs> white boys. But listen, when you talk about, when you, okay, listen. Yeah, when yeah. I was learning how to mac on a chick. Yes. It Culturally. You gonna get dropped off at the mall and here, hey, you better get a number. If you don't get a number, you weak. Versus them, that's not necessarily always the case with them. That's Who why was the person that said that. Who said an older mean, brother? Okay, a cousin. Okay, you know what I'm saying. And, and hey, some cases it do be women in our community, but that's typically what's happened. The pickup artist community, which is where the manosphere really came out. Y'all don't know y'all history. I'm finna give it to you. Okay, the pickup artists. 
Pee are the are the, are the the pickup community is where the red pill manosphere uh uh society came out of because these were men finally swapping notes but it initially came out of like a uh, mainly white men who wanted to figure out how to get with women that's where a lot of the they need those books we all need those books but they created that world because one thing about the white man is he is great at studying other civilizations. He's great at observing the world, writing about it, and teaching about it. That is something that he's gifted at doing. He's a student of life. He's a student of life. So that's why when you look at a guy like Rolla, I would agree. He doesn't come off as cool. Uh, hey, a lot of these men don't come off as cool, fresh, even the black ones. Fresh and fit ain't cool. Them niggas is lame. If they did not have their You might own, have to bleep the niggas part out. If they didn't have a whole show, if they weren't doing the thing they was doing, if the, uh, if the fresh guy didn't have the jewels on his body... No one would pay attention to him. Kevin was the closest because Kevin exemplified something like closest to a man who has actually had those experiences. When he was a Kappa, he went to college. He was a tall brother. You know, he had enough experience with women to be able to have some of those conversations. A lot of these brothers hadn't, they don't got the ground time. They don't got the flight time with women to be able to even have these conversations like we do. Kevin Samuels was a metrosexual. Kevin Samuels was very much so metrosexual. And that's how women identified with him so much because his message was so palatable. Like, he wasn't being no stomp down Tommy Sotomayor, I'm going to put my foot on your throat <laughs> and you're going to understand what I'm saying, woman. Tommy. No, that's not how he got down. Yeah. He was very palatable. Even when he was getting aggressive with the women, it was it was so respectful. Well, women adhere. That's why, that's why you'll see pimps dress the way they dress or, or come off the way they come off. Women sort of want to see something that is very similar and manicured to them. That's what they'll listen to. They don't always want to be around something so rough. And that's one of my theories on why they'll listen to uh, these pretty motherfuckers. That's, that's why they, they that's more they want to be they want to find something relatable to themselves. That's why they listen to gay men. I'm the closest thing that they have to like aggression. I'm like refined aggression. You know, I might get a manicure sometimes. But I'm still like, hey, 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 I'm not playing, okay? Like, we're finna go do this thing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, like, I'm the most respectful knight that the could ever was. But she also knows that hey, this nigga got a sword and he will use it. Well, look at us. We we got beards. We're very manly. Look at the things we talk about. We're very uh, ten toes on what we believe. That's that's very masculine. That can be very harsh. A lot of times when I'm ta talking. Even on my, my YouTube or TikTok, where, you know, oh, it's how you're saying it. <laughs> you could be telling the truth, but it's how you're saying it. I, I'm supposed to say it like this. It's just like a child when you're talking to your child. The kids don't want to be reprimanded, but it's my job to reprimand you. It's just what it is. In a marketplace, like right now, the marketplace is solely ideas. And if you cannot defend your ideas physically and verbally, then maybe you should not be espousing that rhetoric. And right now, we have people who just want... I had a woman, she told me, she said, words or violence. Her man was sitting right there with me, right? And I was like, hey, 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 look up the definition of what violence is. Words ain't violence, baby. Violence is violence. I've been to war, baby. That's violence. Right now, we're having a conversation. And if you can't handle the words that I'm saying right now, earmuffs, bitch. Yeah, women, <laughs> women are very, uh, one, because their playground is emotions. So what do words do? It's not it's not violent, but it, it it evokes emotion. And what happens with women is they control the emotional space. That's why as men, you have to use your mind when she's frantic, because if you follow her emotions, you become frantic. And and usually it leads to violence for them. The women have a propensity to be much more violent than men do, if you ask me, because they're much more emotional than men. A lesbian couples in America have the highest domestic violence rates. Because it's two, Very true. it's two women who are emotional trying to cohabitate with each other. We get, we have this negative connotation to domestic violence. If you try to cohabitate with any person, there's going to be challenges. If you live with your brother, your mother, your family, it's going to be friction because it's multiple people with different ideas and different reference points trying to accomplish a goal. Right. That's very true. You know, I often like to use same-sex relationships as examples to how we do act as that sex and that's a very good point that you brought up lesbian couples do have okay also with this too just to bring this up there's a psychologist that said that in let's say with homosexual males 
they don't have an issue with like porn. Like they don't have an issue watching porn or having some sort of open relationship because of the very nature and how men operate. Right. <laughs> but with women, there is an issue there. They don't really there. It's not as open. It is more, uh, you know, they do seek to have more intimate relationships or more monogamous relationships. And you see that in the male and female dynamic. My so that's very wife, true what you said. My first wife, she would get so mad at me. Like if I was watching a flick and I was, you know what I'm saying, getting my rocks off. She took that as a personal attack against her soul. Mm -hmm. She would cry. Why are you doing that? Am I not enough for you? I'm like, yo, baby, 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 baby. Like for for any man who's getting busy, who's really like making sure that his woman is pleased, or, right? Or, or orgasms are are, are requ <clears throat> orgasms are a requirement. If you're doing the thing, you're putting in work. Your hamstrings, your glutes, your quads, your core. Boy, you're throwing that thing. It's work. Sometimes I don't want to go to work, baby. <laughs> I'm on vacation right now. <laughs> sometimes you just want to beat it and get it over with, man. I mean, it's true. Like, sometimes you just want to, because it is work. Like, and you got to make, if you're smart, see, we giving y'all game. Y'all got to y'all gotta really tap in because everything we really giving y'all is game. And it's, especially for men, you got to make sure she get there first. You know how much energy is required in a 30-minute session? A lot. Man, do you know what 30 minutes of energy is? Go run for 30 minutes. Shadow box for 30 minutes. 30 minutes of beating up that coochie is an experience and it's a workout simultaneously. You Congratulations. Know, I, you, you, first off, you're a genius. <laughs> I've heard that that's like, it is equal to so much workout when you're having that much, like sex for that long. It's yes. like an extraneous workout and you burn a lot of calories. My, my future baby mama right now, my lady right now, the first, like one of the first sexual experiences we had, I mm -hmm. put on the, uh, Miguel Wild Heart album from front to back. I waxed it from front to back. And then every time we did it, she was like, put on the Miguel album. I'm like, baby, I'm tired. <laughs> the hell? Hey, man. So I did shrooms. Uh, baby. Me, me and my wife did shrooms. And we had sex for like four hours straight. Shrooms are fantastic. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive.